today. I am Dr. Patil Sunil Kumar S, Professor and Head Civil Engineering Department, Polchain Institute of Technology, Solapur. So today I am going to discuss about a numerical example. I am going to discuss a numerical example on design of one-way slab. Learning outcomes. At the end of the session, the learners will be able to determine the effective horizontal span and the effective thickness of the slab and they are also able to determine the reinforcement required for the slab that is main reinforcement and distribution steel and sketch the reinforcement arrangement. Example, a hall has a clear dimension 3 meter by 9 meter with wall thickness 230 mm. The live load on the slab is 3 kN per meter square and a floor finished load, finishing load of 1 kN per meter square may be assumed. Use M20 concrete and FE415 grade steel to design the slab. Solution The first step you have to find out the ratio of long span to shorter span LY by LX ratio. LY is 9 meter, LX is 3 meter, 9 by 3, it works out to be 3 which is greater than 2. Hence, it will be designed as one way slab. Next, step number 2, the depth of the slab. So the depth of the slab, rather it is effective depth of the slab. Usually we assume between L by 22 to L by 28, but I will take L by 25 of the span. It is equal to L by 25 into span is 3000. Shorter span always it is, it is 120 mm. So effective depth, I will assume it as 125 mm. Required is minimum is 120, I will assume 125. I will assume a clear cover of 15 mm. Rather, uh, I will assume a clear cover of 20 mm and uh, the diameter of the bar as 10 mm. So it is small d plus half the diameter of the bar plus clear cover. So that was thought to be the capital D that is overall depth 150 mm. Then bending moment and shear force per meter width of the slab. So for that first of all we have to calculate the load distribution. So DL dead load is equal to 0.15 that is 1 into 1 that is 1 meter into 25 kilo newton per cubic meter it is 1 meter width. So it is 3.75 kN per meter, then finishing load it is 1 into 1, 1 kN, then live load it is 1 into 3, that is 3 kN per meter square, so therefore 3 kN per meter, total load is 7.75 kN per meter. So WU it is the partial safety factor that is 1.5 into W, it is 1.5 into 7.75 kN per meter. So effective span is smaller of the two. It is as per clause number 22.2 of IS456. It is LC plus D. That is 3000 plus D. Shorter span always. It is 3.125 meter. Or 3000 plus width of support. It is 3000 plus 230. It is 3.23. Out of these two, the lesser we have to take. Therefore, effective span LE is equal to 3.125 meter. Now can you please tell me what is, where is the maximum bending moment in one way slab? The maximum bending moment is at center of span for one way slab. It is at the mid span of the one way slab. Next you have to calculate MU, it is W into L square upon 8 where L is effective span. So it is 1.5, 7.75 into 3.125 square divided by 8. It is 14.19 kN meter and VU is equal to W into L by 2. It is 1.5 into 7.75 into 3.12 divided by 2. It is 18.164 kN. Step number 4, design for MU. So whenever you want to design, first you have to find out MU limit. First, you have to find out MU limit. For calculation of, for calculating MU limit, there are two methods. One is, you have, you can find out from XU limit. XU limit is 0.48D. 
it is 0.48120 that is 60 mm so ml limit is equal to this is g point 1.1 c that is 0.36 fck bxu that is c into liver arm d minus 0.42 xu limit so if you substitute all the values we will get ml limit as 43.114 kilo newton meter so you can also calculate ml limit by using direct formula a constant into fck bd square where the value of constant is 0.148 for mild steel, 0.138 for Fe415 and 0.133 for Fe500. So you, you will get the same value. If MU is less than MU limit, then it is under reinforced section. So this is must for determination of steel. You should, you should have always under reinforced section. MU must be less than MU limit. Next, you have to calculate MU, also area of steel area of main reinforcement by using G 1.1 B of IS 456 2000 it is MU is equal to 0.87 FY ASTD into 1 minus EST FO upon BDFCK this is G 1.1 B of IS 456 2000 MU is 14.19 into 10 power of 6 it is 0 0.87 FY is 415 AST into 125 is your effective depth 1 minus AST divided by B into D, B is 1000, it is always 1 meter width, 125, 415 FY divided by FCK, 20. So, it was, the AST works out to be 333 mm square. Now, the main reinforcement, step 5, the spacing of main reinforcement I will find out using 10 mm bars. The spacing S is equal to pi by 4 into D square upon AST that was thought to be 235.8 mm. Hence provide 10 mm diameter HYSD bars at 225 mm center to center. Please remember this should be less than spacing calculated. So the last step that is step number 6 check for maximum spacing. So you have to check for maximum spacing, maximum spacing allowed is 3 times D effective depth 3 times 125 that is 375 or maximum is allowed is 300 the spacing provided is satisfactory because it is less than both of these two next step number seven check for shear so first we have to calculate nominal shear stress tau v it is vu upon bd vu is 18.164 into 1000 divided by b 1000 into d is 125 it was sort of 0.145 Newton per mm square. So you have to calculate percentage steel because for calculation of tau c you require percentage steel from table 19. Percentage steel area of 1 bar into divided by 225 that is the spacing you have provided and 125 is d and into 100 that gives you 0.279 percent. So if you refer table 19 you will get tau c for table 19 of is456 tau c it is for beams and slab but for both it is point it works out with 0.375 newton per m square for slabs it is k into tau c tau c is given as k into tau c so k we have to take from 40.1.1 so k is 1.3 into this it works out to be 0.487 newton per m square so now tau v tau c is greater than tau v tau c is greater than tau v and also tau v is less than 0.5 times tau c max tau c max is from table number 20 so hence slab is shape in shear next you have to check for deflection again for deflection also you require percentage steel it we have already calculated for shear in shear calculate checking it is 0.279 so you have to refer figure 4 for your uh, constant f1 it is l by d max it is equal to 20 into f1 it is 20 into f1 so for calculation f f1 you have to refer is uh, uh, figure 4 from is 456 2000 so in that particular case this is figure 4 from is 456 2000 so fs you have to calculate first it is 0.58 into fy 
into EST required upon EST provided. So that works out to be 240.7 Newton per uh, mm square. So if you just use figure number 4 of IS456-2000, you will get F1 as 1.5. So for this particular percentage still of 0 0.279. Then L by D max is equal to 1.5 into 20, that is 30. L by D provided is 3, 1, 2, 5 divided by 125, that is 25, which is less than L by D max. Hence, deflection control is satisfactory. Then the distribution steel, it is 0.12% of area of cross section, 0.12 by 100 into B into D. So here it is 0.12 into 1000 into 125 divided by 100, it is 150mm square. Selecting 8 mm bars, it is spacing will be pi by 4 into 8 square area of 1 bar divided by AST into 1000 that gives you 335. Provide 8 mm diameter bars at 300 mm center to center. This is distribution steel along the longer direction, along 9 meter direction. Now this is the last step that is you have to sketch the reinforcement detaining which is as shown in figure. In plan, I have shown this is width of wall 230 mm then I have shown only the two bars along distribution steel and two bars along the x direction this is 10 mm diameter 225 center to center and this is 8 mm diameter 300 center to center similarly I have taken a section xx so wherein you will find bottom 10 mm diameter 225 center to center then these dotted bars along long direction 8 mm diameter 300 center to center. So alternate bar is bent up. So this is how you have to provide the reinforcement. These are the references used for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you one and all.